were you gutted that you didn't get to film there? Yeah, you best believe it. <laughs> I was, I was gutted. I'm scared. I miss it. I miss how good it made me feel. So Serge, I wanted to start with you. The album obviously is based on Amy Lipschitz's uh, real story, Life. What, how did you balance being faithful to her experiences, her life, but also building a character that felt your own? Yeah, um, that was definitely a conversation that we needed to have in the early stages. Um, Amy and I obviously met at the time it was over Zoom because it was still sort of at the tail end of lockdown. Um, and I think we both realized very quickly that we're very different characters. Um, and because we knew we were going to improvise a lot of this, it was important, I think, for both of us to feel that I had, while honouring her story and the, and the life and the journey of this character, that I still had creative freedom with Nora, our director, to um, help it evolve and elevate it even more and bring some of myself to it purely in terms of just the personality of, mm -hmm. of this person. Um, so that was really wonderful and I think incredibly brave of her to, um, to trust us with that, to be honest, because this is, this is not a story about, you know, someone who goes on holiday to Rome for the summer. It's like, it's a very painful, um, stage in this person's life. And I think we all wanted to protect that and honor it, but also recognize that this is a movie and, you know, there were other creative forces at play that we needed to listen to as well. So part of the movie is filmed in the Orkney Islands. Uh, Papa, were you gutted that you didn't get to film there? Yeah, you best believe it. <laughs> I was, I was gutted because, um, um, yeah, I've, I, 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 I I, I've always wanted to go that far north because isn't it like the or Orkneys are as close to Norway as it is to Edinburgh or something like that? Something mad like something, that, something yeah. Crazy. So it's really, really, you know, it's really far north, really re remote and so different from my day to day and also so so different from where we got to film. Mm -hmm. But also that kind of felt right, you know, because we're looking at two like incredibly different parts of uh, Rona's life and that story, you know, so I took one for the team, I guess. Good for you. Thank you. <laughs> you did get to film in London together. Uh, how was uh, filming in London, but also tackling this heavy but important subject, which I guess wasn't easy at times. For me, it felt um, like an opportunity to um, respectfully portray that experience, whether you are the person going through it directly or you are the loved one of someone who's going through it. I think it's, it's a it's an illness, whether it's alcohol addiction or another form of that, or whether we're just referring to mental illness, it's something that affects everybody across the board in some shape or form. So I think to be able to yet again take a movie and use that as a way to show a slightly different perspective and open people's eyes to that even more, open the conversation even more about what that's like and also the the joy and the healing that can come thereafter um, is always going to be worthy of, of our time, I think. Playing someone that, you know, his, her, uh, his partner is struggling, how he's dealing with that and playing this character and approaching this character. Yeah, it's, it's obviously challenging and, you know, it's a lot to... It, it we 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 shot that part of the movie at the beginning of the movie so you know it's when not only we're just getting to know each other but the crew the director every, everyone's figuring out like like how th this is all going to work you know so it's challenging but i think we were always rooted m m me and Sarah were rooted by what what our ambition for the relationship was we wanted to create something that felt you know dimensional and truthful and conflicting and you know we kind of want the audience to kind of believe that um it's salvageable you know and i think you see that they they, they really are fighting um to salvage what is something because there's something very pure at the center of their relationship um um but you know like the challenge uh is huge it's huge and and if you don't have the tools um, to, to overcome it, that's not necessarily your fault, but mm. it does actually mean that sometimes the most kind and loving thing to do is to walk away. So, so this is your first producing credit. Having worked as an actor for so many years now, um, how was having these two roles combining in the same movie? 
it was great. I think it was exactly what I needed. Um, it was a really excellent way to get out of your own head and think about the bigger picture. And also for me to be able to put my energy into actively into the people that I was working with and know that I could help them if you know hair and makeup aren't being listened to enough or a cast member needs a little bit more of something whether it's on set or off um because I'm I'm so used to being in that position myself I have an, an empathy and an understanding of anyone else who is in that role so I just feel like more creative people need to be making their own stuff um, because there isn't this cutthroat element that I think you can get sometimes with industry heads. Um, you, yeah, you just have an understanding of, of how things should be done, I guess, and the, and the safest way to do that. So that was wonderful to be able to exercise that. Amy, I wanted to start with you. You obviously had these heartbreaking experiences, you turn them into this amazing book and now it's turned into this beautiful movie. It must be surreal for you. Yeah, what a, what a dream, huh? Um, uh, when I wrote the book, I was at a, at a tough point in my life. I was, I was newly sober, I felt quite washed up, but I felt I could sense this book. Uh, and uh, I took myself off to the island of, uh, small Orkney island of Papi to, to write it. Um, and the very limits of my ambition for it, which I occasionally let myself think of, was getting the book published, getting it out there. I never dreamed that it would get to the stage that we're at today of being adapted into a movie. Yeah, did you give any advice to Sarah Sharona, who is playing you or a version of you in the movie? <laughs> um, oh, I don't think I needed to, to give her advice. She, um, uh, you know, she's a very talented actress and, and she had, where she took her advice from was uh, our screenplay and and the book I think more than uh, more than from talking to me which we did as well yeah. and then she also um, spoke to people in Orkney people in recovery and did did her own research in that way yeah amazing so Nora uh, portraying alcoholism on screen sometimes has fallen into cliches how do you make sure that this didn't happen in this movie yeah I mean um, first of all we try to focus more on the process of recovery, you know? And yes, of course, the alcoholism is part of it, the addiction and the dark times, but most of the film deals with her being sober. And it's just in the memories that you see how things went down. And um, it's a combination, you know? We we, we try to, to get into Rona's perspective as good as we can, which means, you know, the camera is sometimes very out of focus and the sound is distorted as her memory is of those moments. And I hope that we never look down on her or expose it, but we're always like, even in the worst moments, we're kind of with her in that situation. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so we were talking about Sergia, who is not only the leading actress, but she's also a producer in this movie. How, what surprised you the most about her new role in this movie? Because this is the her first time producing. I mean, for me, it's a gift, honestly. If an actress is a producer as well, it means that she's 100% committed because she wants this to work. It's not just a money job of coming in and out. It's like it's her baby as well as it is... Amy's baby and my baby, you know, we, 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 we work together to create something and it's nice. Then you have access very early on in script discussions, brainstorming, and automatically it creates more depth in a way. Yeah, there's an element of uh, Rona's as a character that I love and it's the hair colors. <laughs> I feel like the hair colors keep changing and they're kind of telling a story of their own. Is this, it was this intentional, is this... You agree with this? Yeah, it was intentional. As everything in the film, it comes from Amy's book. And, and there were times where Amy was writing about dyeing her eyebrows red <laughs> or something, and it all got out of control. And, you know, it, it, she, she Rona is a young woman who expresses through her hair color, through fashion, you know, it's part, part of her. So we thought... Let's use it, you know, and have blue represent Orkney and orange represent London, the sort of the, the contrast of the two and have it grow out and help us with understanding where we are in this nonlinear structure. And yet at the same time, it's part of her character. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, another element that I love is the inclusion of 
mythology. I love those little bits of mythology, like the Selkies that, you know, pop out in the movie. How do you think that helps framing her story or help telling her mm. story? Well, I use, I use a lot of metaphor and some of these, like the story of Heather Blether, I just found out about during the writing of the film and it was kind of irresistible to me as almost a metaphor of um, this disappearing island about chasing this promise that's always... It's a metaphor about about addiction, really, about chasing something that you can never quite reach, and that just seemed like the perfect piece of mythology to symbolise that. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, your book has inspired many people, and now this movie is going to reach even more people. What are you hoping that people take away from it? Um, I hope they have a, an interesting and an enjoyable watch, and um, and. Um, and overall message is about the possibility of change, you know, about that it is, it, it, you don't know what's around the corner, but it, but it could be something beautiful. Yeah, and what about you, Nora? Um, what do you think people are going to take away from this story? Well, I hope that it gives hope for people who struggle with addiction themselves, you know, that healing is possible. And I also hope that for people who don't struggle with addiction, it gives some tolerance and understanding about how tough this process of recovery is. Because from the outside, sometimes you think, well, you're sober six months, now get over it, g g get on with your life. Yeah. But for people who, who are in the process of recovery, it's like ups and downs and in circles, you know, and sometimes you're, you're sober for years, but it's still one day at a time. And it's really tough to get yourself out of it. And it needs support and 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 respect because it's quite an achievement you know if somebody really turns this self-destructive force into something positive 